Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. I'm Ross Miriam. And you're watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. Ross, are you excited? I am. The time is here. It's back. Death Right Shaman is gone. Yeah, so Legacy. Legacy is back. This is the <laughs> time period where I had some of the most success in Magic was pre Death Right Shaman, and we're finally back there again. Tell me what you think the lack of Death Right Shaman means for Legacy moving forward. Well, one, right now, it means I don't know what is good and what isn't good <laughs> because. We know what Legacy looked like in 2012, right before Deathrite Shaman was printed that fall. It took a while for the format to coalesce around Deathrite Shaman, so there was a lot of flux after it was printed. But if history has taught us anything, we're not going to just go back to 2012. We got six years of new cards, and we now have to figure out what they do to that world without the yoke of death right shaman hanging over them yeah it's it's really interesting to me and I, I, yeah jackson probe got banned too who cares storm got a lot worse thank god uh, <laughs> uh i mean cards like young pyromancer uh monastery mentor and uh the storm decks in general all losing attacks and probe is a very big deal uh, i i think that uh the card was really the glue that turbocharged uh, those cards as well as the storm deck basically just giving it free information on is it okay to go for right now it also was insanely good combined with cabal therapy out of the storm decks and the lack of that means that storm's going to have a, a bit of an uphill battle if it wants to to continue living maybe that's why caleb chair is taking a break from the scg tour you know? <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I was on a stream and he was trying to test uh post to probe stormless and they all looked like stormless looked like in 2011 and 2012 mm -hmm. and uh, that just wasn't good enough they were, they were a little bit too slow because now you just didn't have that free spell. You just had a ton of one-mana spells. So you're, it felt like the, the deck almost got a half a turn slower as a result. Mm. Obviously, the, the downgrade from Therapy to Thoughtseize was a big deal, especially in an Ad Nauseam deck. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Storm, I, I feel, is kind of on the fringe. Maybe you want to move towards more of a Tess model with uh, more Chrome Moxes and Burning Wishes and Rite of Flames yeah. to be more explosive. That could definitely be a way to go with Storm now to... Much to Brian Cook's. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say Brian great. Cook's probably like, yes, <laughs> yeah. everybody come to the dark side. <laughs> but, but I just, I just don't know what's gonna happen. Like, is, is Team Delver just great again? Because that's yes. Like, those decks just look like the same deck from 2012. Oh, yeah. No, they have gotten some what I consider upgrades. Uh, we'll be talking about that later this week. Uh, but this week is Legacy Week, and we haven't done this in a very long time because Legacy has been kind of on the back burner, but with, with this new uh, shakeup of the format, things are just looking up. And I, I think that someone really needs to go to Noah Walker's house and make sure he's okay. <laughs> there are a lot of people who need to... <laughs> Need that. Tan and Grace. Yeah, Tan and Grace needs I mean, that I'm service. I'm pretty sure he could just transition to Team Redelver. Probably, probably the same with Noah Walker as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm but sure. I'm sure they'll all be fine. Brainstorm is still legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait for that day. That's going to be a bad day. Uh, anyway, so this week is Legacy Week. We're doing this in celebration of Jetaxian Probe and mostly Death Rush Armor being banned because that opens up a lot of new cards and even some new decks in the format, as well as some old favorites. Uh, today, we are going to be playing uh, Goblins from my side. This is a deck that I think got a a lot better now that Death Rite Shaman is gone simply because a 1-2 can't block, or sorry, there's no longer the 1-2 to block uh, Goblin Lackey. Lackey. That's the one. Yeah, which was a 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. Yes, yep. and he's cycling Jim Palm Center and get his job done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the issue against most 1-mana creatures, if you're on the play at least, you get to go Goblin Lackey, and then cycle jump home incinerator in turn two, get your Lackey in, kill their thing, don't and lose play any a cards. Free creature. Put, yeah, put something into play, mm -hmm. and you're just way ahead on both tempo uh, and even on cards. Then, but Death Ray Chum being a one two stopped that, so it forced them to play weak cards like Tar Fire yep. in order to kill the one two, and that just wasn't good. I think the, the underlying issue with a lot of the decks, that, and we're going to see a lot of them this week, is that heavy mana denial strategies that didn't include Chalice of the Void got punished very heavily by Deathrite Shaman. Yes. Not only did it give them a buffer against wastelands and ports by being a mana creature, it also stopped you from really being able to cut them off of a color mm -hmm. by 
making any color because the yeah. car just did everything. Yeah, just one man a planeswalker. <laughs> yeah. It's got so many abilities. <laughs> and, and then when the, it transitioned to the late game, the card was still relevant. So it was just the perfect answer to these Wasteland port decks. Uh, Death and Taxes was able to survive but largely on the strength of Aether Vial, yes. but uh, it has been um, it has been around, and that's really been the only one. And now I think a lot of different other strategies uh, get to come out of the woodwork that employ those two cards, and Goblins is one of them. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm playing today. I'm playing specifically Jim Davis's list from his article from uh, just a week and change ago. So make sure you go check that out if you want a more in-depth and thorough uh look Analysis? at uh, yeah i don't know it's but it's all theory crafting <laughs> you know we haven't gotten to play just yet uh we're filming this right before seg is that how you pronounce it Worcester. no that is the, it's just worcester worcester or worcester if you're from worcester there. Yeah, if you're from, well, the, if I'm you've saying. got the Boston accent, there are no R's in your voca in your vocabulary ever. That, that letter just got deleted from the alphabet up there. That's fair. Uh, so that's what I'm playing today. If you want to check out Jim's article, go do that. What are you playing today? I am playing Miracles, a deck that didn't really gain or didn't lose anything and shouldn't stick around because it was one of the more uh, powerful decks in the previous metagame. But I wanted to play it against Goblins in particular because this matchup was always really interesting five or six years ago. Mm. Goblins ended up being favored because of the just raw amount of card advantage they can generate and the fact that Aether Vial let them get their card advantage spells down through counter spells and yep. counterbalance. Uh, and that was even back when the deck still had top. I think Monastery Mentor does change things because it stops you from being able to just slow down and play the most grindy game possible. So uh, I'm interested to see how Monastery Mentor affects the dynamics of the matchup by giving Miracles an aggressive element that it mm -hmm. didn't have before. Uh, but outside of that, I definitely think Goblins is ahead. And this is definitely a matchup that Goblins is going to need to be ahead in, I think, if it wants to return to its past glory. And yep. I'm certain Jim Davis wants that to happen. <laughs> so we should help him out. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the match between Goblins and Blue Eye Miracles. Since we are doing a return to the best of five format for this week, we are going to play the 7 11 game. 7 you win, 11, or sorry, 7 you lose, 11 you win. If you roll 7 while the opponent rolls an 11, they get to go first all five games. Yeah. So it's a doozy. A big whammy. Aw. Well, that was quick. Uh, yeah, that quick, was quick and painful. <laughs> Well, the games are not going to be quick and painful, so... Oh, yeah, they're going to be long and awful. <laughs> <laughs> Terminus, all your goblins to the... But fine, I'll just go get them again. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to Terminus a deck with Goblin Matron. Um, yeah, this hand looks pretty good. Resilient to Wasteland, and we've got a bunch of early plays. Yeah, my hand's great. That's lucky. Well, it's not great, great, but it's good. I will play a Preordain. I have a no response. <sighs> Um, so I really want to find one of these, so I think I'm going to bottom that one because I don't need another one and keep this. So bottom top, draw it. That's yep. the turn. All right. Uh, name Goblin. Goblin Lackey. Your turn. If he doesn't have Plow, he did. <laughs> well, not that. He could play a naked Snapcaster Mage and block, but okay. I am also fine with that. Uh, this is not good. Ah, uh, he did! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> play a ponder. Yeah, sure. I guess he could dig for a plow, find it, and then kill my thing. If he shuffles, though, he did. <laughs> uh. Getting punished for your 27 basic islands? Or desperately needing a, a plow, swords to plow shares? It's one or the other. <laughs> it could be both, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. Well, I think I want this one. And now I will cast Portent. Sure. And we'll shuffle off that. You can just go and draw your card since neither of us are doing anything after yep. that. Scott and Lackey's going to be a problem. Oh, it's so good, dude. Oh, it's so good. Counter Souls is an annoying card. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Just the the bane of everyone who plays any blue deck. Yep. Okay. Uh, go to Todd's turn yep. on his upkeep. I draw with Portent. Yep. I'll draw for my turn. Yep. 
So we can just start playing ringleaders and stiff, or we can put max pressure. I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I want to put max pressure. So in order for us to get hit with a terminus, he needs to go uh, white's horse and then portent again, or have, uh, you just shuffled and drew a random one, right? Correct. So he, or he would have to go like manipulate and then brainstorm into terminus. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm definitely playing this. And the question is, do I want to put in a siege gang or a goblin ringleader? Both are really bad for him. I think, let's see, that'll put you to 19. How much damage is that next turn? So three, four, five, so 10, 11, 12, 34 to 15, 17 damage next turn? That's a lot. <clears throat> All right. Kills me with the red, so rest for <clears throat> each gang. I'm at 19. Okay. All right, your turn. That was perfect. No! No! <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, crap. So, I think I actually need to do this in the other order because this, these don't just get me out of it. So, uh, let's uh, crack fetch, go to 18. So mad right now. And find a basic planes to prevent wasteland. And you got four cards over there. Yeah, they're all great. Are they? I mean, if I'm getting terminus, this is not great. So <laughs> if you if you're terminusing me, you're gonna have a problem. Ponder. Sure. Interesting. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. shuffle, shuffle. Keep those. Crap. Ponder. Okay, well, it's Swords of Posh for this, and then he's still taking a chunk, and I get to put in a ringleader, so that's good. And I guess he could kill this, but then he's taking mm -hmm. way too much damage. Well, we didn't find the mana we needed to cast this, so that's a shuffle. <laughs> Free verdict, eh? <laughs> With the island in the hand, eh? <laughs> I have no idea why the deck plays so many islands. <clears throat> this, oh. is, this is just conjecture. I have no idea. Oh, no, you're right. Yes. <laughs> well, m mostly right. All right. I, I don't have an island in my hand. <laughs> uh, draw randomly a Fonder. Oh, now I do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and swords this pile driver now so Todd can't just throw it out new Siege Gang. All right, 21. Siege, one. Pass the turn. Could wait until after I attack and it gets plus 10 or whatever. Yeah, I don't really want to do that either. All right. Uh, Six. Sir? Yeah, that's fine. Brings me to 12. Trigger. All right, we are going to try to threaten lethal next turn by going, uh, put in a war chief, and then post combat, put in a matron, and go get a pile driver. Yeah. Your turn. We are still sweating, terminus, etc. Ugh. That was not good. So. What can I do this turn? Being that Todd has a lethal, it's kind of hard to cast this one. Um, oh, Chase Bounce. <laughs> Jace Bounds Ward Chief would, would save you for a turn. <laughs> uh, so I guess I just have to pass the turn. All right. So he almost 100% has Snapcaster Mage, and he's just going to try to. He's going to go snap plow the Pile Driver and then block this, I guess. If we draw a red source, I think he's dead or close to. All right, well, we have no other plays, so play this. Resolve. Declare tax. 
Tori declare. I will file this war chief. I guess that works too. Uh, gain you two. You got a 23. I will declare tax. Attacking for seven. I go to five. All right, trigger. Um, we'll just start playing ringleaders while we can. Trigger. Yep. Those lines. Right. Uh, you're good. Okay. Need a terminus. Uh, does that do anything? Um, I don't think it does enough because I don't have a way to redraw on Todd's turn. But I don't know. Chase brainstorm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so close. So close. One turn away. Yep, I'm dead. Don't Thanks. have a way to redraw that terminus. Okay, we are back here for game two, a second pre sideboard game, and my hand has a lot of good interactive cards, and I can beat Cavern Lackey this time, so Todd probably has Aether Vial. <laughs> Uh, my side, I mulliganed a no red source, no ether vault opener into uh, this hand, which is okay, uh, but we really need our ether vault to stick, so hopefully it does. Uh, top card. This card actually is going to be pretty good in this matchup. Uh, and since we've already played a game one, I think we're going to keep it, uh, not only because of uh, the more expensive cards in our hand, because, but also because it works well with ether vial. Okay. I have a ponder. Okay. Okay. Um, I like basically all of these cards. So um, let's. This I think is the worst of them. So I'll start here and draw it. How's that one? I mean, I already knew you had it. Well, I meant like, do you have the Force Will? Did you draw it off the Ponder? No. Did you dig specifically for Force Will because I said I had Ether Vial? One, I already do 100% the Udaether Vial because of the texture of my hand. I will pass the turn. All right, take up Vial. That's an interesting one. That one actually could be good later. Uh, we're just going to play this Rishadon port, though. Pass the turn. Keep. All right. Now... I kind of want to hit his Flood Strand because if we draw a Wasteland, we get to do some dirty things to his Flood Strand. But uh, he could just let it sit tapped, not crack it, or crack it. Neither of those things is actually just worse than having his Island tapped, I think. All right, I'll target Island, and if he wants to Brainstorm, he's got to do it now. I'll target Island. Yes. That's fine. Got another one. Oh, lucky. Um... <clears throat> I will eh, just pass the turn. All right. Take Vile up. Go. Upkeep. Upkeep. I will target Island once again, this time to keep him off of Jace for this turn. Draw. Mm-hmm. I will pass the turn. All right, in the turn, Margor Marshall trigger. Sure. Make a Cedric Phillips. Cedric is fine. <clears throat> Sometimes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fetch. We don't have reasons to not thin our deck. You're 19. Oh, I guess some, so not to, to call it out or whatever, but Sometimes there's back to basics in the Miracles decks, especially when we've seen only basic lands for two whole games. And I have no reason to fetch Plateau because I have no white cards in my main. And since there's no top, uh, there's no reason to get green for 10 Street Hooligan. So better safe than sorry. Makes sense. Now comes the question, do I actually want to pay for Mon War Marshal? And I think the answer is yes, oddly enough. I like how paying for it is the odd choice. 
Yeah, I mean, the two mana is a real cost, uh, considering my hand. Um, I don't think I want to cast either of these, so we'll pay. Take this up to three. And then attack. 18. All right, I will go ahead and fetch again to uh, 18. And I will pass the turn. Uh, on your end step, I will brainstorm. Uh, sure. That was not ideal, but... Um, it's going to be a long game. Yes, <laughs> it's going to be a very long game. You have four cards in hand? Yeah, I feel like this is going to be one of those... Uh, uh, Snapcaster Terminus game. <laughs> hmm. 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 I kind of want to keep this one. Um. But man. Must be a bunch of good cards over there if you just want to keep them all. Yeah, they're all pretty good. I actually think this is the worst one. It's pretty awkward around port, and we're going to have time without it. This is probably the next worst one. I want to try to find a, a time to land this, but that's hard, also hard against Vile. Maybe I'm just overrating this. The Vile makes this game kind of difficult to play. I guess it makes all my... Like, Vile just makes expensive sorceries awkward. Maybe I'm just supposed to get rid of both of these. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um... Go to my turn. I will wait to your draw step. Uh, upkeep. Yep, crack this. 17. Don't want to crack the strand yet because I want I don't want Todd to be able to just port my white source. I, I also want to be very clear here. Uh, Ross needs to be very careful how he like interacts with me on his upkeep because if he says upkeep and like pauses and waits for me to do something, that's actually sometimes considered passing priority. And yeah. if he passes priority, then he has to draw before he can fetch. Yeah. So in order to prevent that confusion, I just recommend doing that during, you know, in step or whatever, just to make sure it's clear. All right, after you do that, I'll target an island. That's fine. I will draw my card. Mm -hmm. uh, I will cast a portent. Okay. I will stack them like that. Okie doke. Uh, pass to your turn. Trigger. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to do this. The cards in my hand are too important to lose right now to a terminus. Uh, draw. We'll just go ahead and main phase this, though, to get some cards going on. Trigger. Yep. One, two, three, four. That was bad. Um, I don't really want to get much counter spell. That was just Mogwar Marshall? Yeah. So I'm just going to attack for four, put 13. you to 13, and I'll try to cast another War Marshall. Sure. Trigger and a goblin. Unfortunately, War Marshal's trigger is a go to the graveyard and not leaves the battlefield. So a terminus does clean up all of my stuff. Your turn. Okay. Uh, so you you did not play a land last turn, right? Correct. So he kept the top though, so he probably drew land. 
I will wait till his draw step. Miracle trigger. With that on the stack, I'll crack this fetch. Okay. I'm at 12. Got a basic points. You will have priority with the Miracle Trigger. Yeah, you can cast it. I will cast it. Okay. After you cast, I'm going to tap an island. Sure. You got three in hand over there? Uh, four, five, four. Four. Um, okay, I'm going to take a calculated risk here and try to land a mentor. Uh, in order for Todd to kill it, he'll have to have like multiple creatures and gem palm or siege gang a tick his vial up to five. So you can have another war marshal too, but. Trigger. Yep. Just a war chief, okay. These are not good ringleaders. Yeah, I'm getting a little lucky here, but I'm not uh, Goblin, War Chief, Cycle. Four. I'm at eight. Okay, your turn. And you have three in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I can play the second mentor that I had. And brainstorm and make a monk token. Um, this one's definitely going back, and that one. So I can leave myself maximum optionality. And let's plow the war chief now. I kind of wanted to do it on Todd's turn, but if he has another jump palm in hand, he gets to, so go to respond 20. to the mentor the mentor trigger with jump with the incinerator and kill it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go to twenty, and I'm gonna want to do it before he starts casting spells to limit his mana anyway. I'm gonna, Eight, I can take one more hit from this ringleader. Chief. Yeah, you caverned it, so. Yep. Yeah. Right, uh, incinerate this. Yep. Attack. Three in hand still? Yep. <clears throat> well, that didn't go so well. Um, let's go to six. Okay, pass. And you can go. Siege Gang. Sure. All right. Um, declare attackers. That is fine. Four blockers. 
play a Snapcaster Mage. Resolves. Target Brainstorm. Resolves. Go to blockers. Sure. Uh, a Snapcaster will be here, and one each on these. Before damage, I will brainstorm trigger prowess on both of the monk tokens. Mm -hmm. And let's just get rid of these two. Yeah, definitely the worst cards. Okay, go to damage. Uh, sure. So Snapcaster trades there. You get left of the Cedric Phillips when the other thing does. Uh, Goblin Sharpshooter. Resolves. Target. These both have one damage on them, so... Um, you get two on taps, right? So you get to ping me? No. I, cause I, so basically, if, if it kills a creature, oh, it just, yeah. it just keep, breaks I even. I keep thinking it's, is it static caster? But it's only, is it static caster because it keeps getting to untap and kill all of them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't... doesn't <laughs> It right. doesn't untap all the time after doing is it static caster. All right, uh, your turn. Uh, on my upkeep, I will crack this fetch. Go Wait, to five. Five. All right, I'm going to tap Tundra. Two cards over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, draw. Mm -hmm. Terminus. Yeah, careful with that, but that's fine. I'm, you know, for, for viewers at home, if the card touches your hand in a yeah. tournament, that is very bad. I'm not the best at, at the miracle. Drawing. Oh, no, it's if, <laughs> if you don't play a lot of miracles, the mechanics of it are silly and bad. Okay. So play a pre drink. Yeah, it's fine. Um,. Hmm. Draw this one and ponder. Yep. Ooh. What you got? I just want to draw Siege Gang Commander. <laughs> yeah, that one would be tough to beat. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'll just draw this one. Pass the turn. All right, Wasteland, your Tundra. I'll play this off a of cavern. Yep. I will say go, and I will tap a planes. Uh, on your end step, I'm going to predict yep. myself. Yeah, that's true. I will name Jace the Mind Sculptor. Wow. You stacked it like that? You didn't want to draw Jace? Yeah, I thought you would do more than play Pile Driver. No, that's fair. But I'll draw my two cards. <laughs> All right. Upkeep, tap planes. I will. Um... Snap plow. Yeah, that's the plan. All right. I'll do it this way. Okay. Uh, so I go to 21. You're still at four. Yep. I draw for turn. Mm -hmm. And I will ponder. Yep. And these do not seem very good. I guess I kind of want the other <coughs> land. Yeah, I guess I do want the other land. Okay, keep them. Play land. All right, play this. Sure. I'll pass, and then on your upkeep, I will tap a planes. Okay, draw. Mm -hmm. Play a Teferi Hero of Dominator. <laughs> I will plus to draw a card. In response, I'm going to Tarfire your... Snapcaster Mage. That's fine. Uh, I could tr save the Tarfire. I think I only have one main, though, to tutor up with a matron if I need. Old versions used to play this, a lot, but I don't think this one does. Uh, I could be wrong. And step on top of these lands. Yep. So, this is going to have to be a pretty good one. Attack. Me, I assume? Yeah. I'm a three. I guess I still can't really beat a Siege Gang Commander. 
trigger. Uh. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Uh, Goblin, Cedric Phillips. Okay, we're here for sideboarding. Uh, on my side, I am bringing out all of my counter spells, which were pretty heinous in both of those pre-board games against Cavern of Souls and Aether Vial. And just bring in a sort of assortment of cards. We've got another land to help against Todd's Mana Denial effects. Grok is also very good against Thalia. Um... Some additional threats that can help me take a more aggressive posture if needed. We saw there in game two, I tried to take a somewhat aggressive posture because I wasn't under a lot of pressure early, but Todd just had one removal spell for each of my mentors. And I think if I can like bait a removal spell with a click, I can get a mentor down or vice versa. Uh, Gideon acting similarly. And uh, Gideon should be pretty good as long as I can keep... Uh, Goblin Warchief off the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And then uh, an extra sweeper, which is obviously going to be good. The search for Escanta is another way to gain card advantage in a long game and something I can get down early when we're not doing a whole lot, uh, especially in games where Todd is Aether Vile. And I'm bringing the one Disenchant instead of Council's Judgment as an answer to Vile, because I don't think Judgment being able to answer creatures is that relevant. No, no, Todd doesn't really care about individual creatures with the exception of an early Lackey, which Judgment doesn't answer. Uh, and so I'm going to take the sort of more uh, the leaner card here, just the two-mana instant as opposed to the three-mana sorcery, uh, just to answer Vile. And this is more to get these cards out of my deck than these cards being particularly good. My sideboard certainly isn't well-situated for this matchup. Um, maybe you want things like Blue Elemental Blast. I don't know. Uh, definitely uh, something to think if, think about if Goblins becomes a uh, bigger deal. Yep. Uh, I mean, the, the strength of Blue Elemental Blast in a lot of spots, though, is countering spells. And I think a one-for-one -one removal spell in this matchup is not, like, something that's going to swing the matchup heavily in your favor by any stretch of the imagination. Obviously, killing something like Goblin Warchief is, is ideal. And if I don't draw a cavern, being able to counter, like, a matron or a ringleader is, is big. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't think you have, not, you know... I don't think it'll be the difference between you winning and losing this match, having one or two blue elemental blasts on the sideboard. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Uh, from my side, Thalia Guardian of the Raven is a fine sideboard card here. It slows down Ross's development early, uh, making his cantrips cost a lot more. Um, Soldier is a fairly common creature type in, in goblins, I believe. Um, yeah, don't quote me if I'm wrong. I think, uh, I, I forget which ones are, but I remember back in the day, Thali was in the deck, so you could cavern on Warrior, and then it worked with like Soldier. Or, sorry, uh, on Soldier, and it worked with like three of your other goblins. So uh, it made it so you didn't have as much strain on your uh, fetch lands to find Plateau. Uh, but yeah, we're taking out some of our, our random one ofs, 10 Tree Hooligan, Skirt Prospector, uh, you know, basically just no targets for this. Um, sacrificing creatures for mana, not really something I need to be doing. This is more for speed combo y type stuff, uh, so that we can combo kill our opponent with like War Marshal and uh, Goblin Pile Driver if they're a faster combo deck. And then Sting Scourger is a tutor target to help out against things like Show and Tell or Reanimator when they put a giant creature into play. And it's more of uh, just a. Safety valve. Yeah, so. definitely not meant for this matchup. All right, uh, I was mistaken. I, I don't believe I have any soldiers in my deck. I, I was curious. I, I checked the uh, uh, gatherer for all my creatures, and uh, yeah, just all yeah. So, so it's. I mean, cavern souls can still name either human or or uh, soldier to cast it, but it will make it a little awkward later on. So, uh, but we are here for game three. And I have a very slow hand here on the play, but I kind of want to see how good this card is. So, because I think it might be sneakily good in this matchup. Okay. Uh, my side, we are, uh, honestly, this hand is not very good, but I think I'm going to keep it because I think the games are going to go pretty long. Okay. Uh, I will play Marshall Latson Pass. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just want to go ahead and thin my deck. Your turn. I will play an island. Since we have another fetch in hand, I'm just going to get a mountain with this one. If we draw a Thalia, we'll just fetch the plateau and cast it. Boop. Interesting. Okay. 
right, goblin, right on time. Uh, on your instep, Paul. Fetch points, apply that. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it was a good draw. 20. So I'm a 19, you're a 20. Mm hmm. And got six over there. Sure do. Interesting. Uh, because I want to follow up with this, I'm going to get basic plane, another planes here. I'm going to go to 18 and stone rain you. Stone rain me? Oh. <laughs> okay. So you're at 18. You can go. Okay. Yeah. Getting, getting planes. That resolves. Yuck. Now who's the man of denial deck? I guess you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Scalding Tarn doesn't untap either. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> For that, when you said Scalding Tarn, I was just like, oh no, did I just screw myself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drew Island, that's perfect. Gideon. Oh, that it? That's all you got? Make a knight. You can okay. go. Apply <laughs> your creature, Stone Rain, you Gideon. Wow. Gideon, allies in the car, still just as good now as it was in standard. Look at me. I am the beatdown now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm at 19. This doesn't untap. Gideon doing exactly what I wanted it in these games, letting me take a very aggressive posture. Go. Yeah, I mean, if that's how you win the games in this matchup, that's awesome. Just back to basics, me play Gideon. We talked a little bit during the uh, pre. Or, wow, yeah, I vote for this one too. <laughs> uh, pre sideboard games. I, I, I honestly didn't think back to basics would be that good. It's obviously a lot better if I don't have uh, an uncontested lackey or uh, access to an ether vial. So at seven, so I'm at twelve. Uh, yeah, I forgot your fat check. You're yep. at twelve. You can yeah. get. It. Is that good? <laughs> Go. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I go to 17. I drew them uh, quite after the fact. Ugh. Ugh. Jim Davis, get Rishon Port out of your deck. It's bad. Um, and I will predict myself. You should name. I should name. Island. How many islands are in your deck? Seven. Oh, yeah. So you got four <laughs> left. You also don't want to draw island. Oh, you should have named Brainstorm. You had four left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, draw one. That was yeah. a good draw. Dude, does it, I, I'm so dead. I'm playing this out for everyone at home and for Ross because this is the only game he's going to win. <laughs> Snap, ply, or lackey. Okay. Why don't you just cancel judgment then? So you don't... Oh, I guess you could save that for something more important later. You're All right. 13 plus Gideon attack for seven. Yep, I'm at six. You can go. Well, that was my only card I could draw to not be dead. Let's see if it works. Go. Literally the only card in my deck where I wasn't just 100% doomed. Uh, it's plus and mush. Uh, I guess probably not with a snap. Oh, then I'll uh, take two and jump. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Uh, so you go to four. Yep. I uh, will play Monastery Mentor. Come on! And then I will play a Brainstorm and get a Monk. <laughs> oh no, I drew the white card. Mm. Um, can you just make a decision? I'm dead in next turn. I just, I'm just i just trying to let you do your thing. You can go. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go. Oh, yeah. I'm dead. I'm actually just dead, dead. Yeah. Block. I mean, I, I have you're two dead. blockers. You're dead to a sp I think I have three. I have two blockers, and I'm at four. Okay. I'm dead. I think I have three blockers. But I also have plow. No, because you're going to plow. Because I knew you said you, <laughs> you said you had the white card. <laughs> okay. I'm doing a little bit of uh, more sideboarding here before game three. Uh, back to basics was so strong. I want to try the second one here. Uh, and, and it. When I go on this sort of back to basics plan, I want to bring in the council judgment just to answer Aether Vials, and I have two judgments and Disenchant. Yep. I'm bringing out Click, so I am a little bit more vulnerable to Todd's removal, but 
I actually think just taking out his mana sources uh, and makes it so much easier to deal with his threats, especially with my sweepers, mm -hmm. that I don't need to get aggressive with creatures. Uh, Vanilla Cook's also uh, not a, an, a good aggressive card for your deck, right? Like Monster Inventor, you can chain that off, and if I don't kill it, it'll literally kill me. You know, Vanilla yeah. Cook takes quite a bit of time, and I have a number of ways that can just cleanly answer it. Uh, so I think it is the worst of, of the options, you know, and, yeah. and I think cutting it is more than fine. Yep. All right, we're here for game four. I'm on the play, and my hand is... I don't want to talk about it, uh, but I'm keeping it. Uh, yeah, my hand is a little slow here, but we have a lot of deck manipulation, so hopefully I don't fall too far behind. Is that, is that a lackey? No. Okay. 19. I'm a little vulnerable to an early lackey, so kind of happy not to see that. I will play a ponder. I don't know which one I would rather start with. Vile and Lackey are both really powerful and good in wildly different scenarios. For one mana, that's kind of nuts. Hmm. I don't really know if these are good at all. I guess I can go like draw this, draw this, combo there. That seems reasonable. Okay. You can go. This does make me kind of slow still. Mm. <laughs> I'm at 18. That was a good top deck. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I'll go to 19. <laughs> Play two mana for a bonder. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so get basic planes. Hopefully, I can find a terminus. I guess. Yeah, hand was definitely vulnerable to Thalia. All right, so we have eighteen to nineteen currently, and you're fetching before Ponder resolves. Yep. Didn't really have a choice in the matter. Yeah. Got four cards in hand. Mm -hmm. What's my hand? Terrible. Okay. <laughs> Those are not good. Just <laughs> more expensive spells. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get those out of here. Uh, I guess you can take your turn because I'm not doing anything after I draw. I'll wait. Okay. You want to savor this? Yeah. I know this is not going to survive for very long, but I want I want to get as much camera time as possible. Yeah, I do like me right. some Thalia. Okay. All right, so you draw off your random ponder. Yep. I'm going to draw for my turn. Yep. That's pretty good. Uh, so I have the option here. Thalia makes my second Ethan Vile cost two, but I think Rish Import just slows down his development enough that it's worth uh, just putting it on the battlefield and Seven. using it. So. All right, your turn. On his upkeep... I'm definitely using port, and this is, so I I want to keep him off of Terminus. If he has plow, he's going to be plowing Thalia. Like, if I target his island, he's 100% just going to plow it anyway. Yeah. But if I tap planes now, if he hits a Terminus, he can't cast it. And Terminus. Pass the turn. Right, activate. Drop. You about to get big? Not quite. Uh, Cavern of Souls named Goblin, play ringleader, trigger. Yep. Two, three, four. Man, my ringleader's been bad. All right. Uh, swing for seven. I'm at ten. All right, your turn. This is a little dangerous because he can go EOT Brainstorm, untap Terminus. And a turn Brainstorm. Yep. Let's hope he doesn't have it. Well, those were not particularly good. I gotta figure out which one of these I want to shuffle away, and it's probably gonna be it's gotta be that one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh on top, terminus you. And then I will crack fetch, go to nine, get an island and play search for Escanta. Okay. And pass the turn. I have six cards in my graveyard, which is great. I'm going to be able to transform this next turn. I 
Todd may have a Wasteland in his hand and decided to play Ringleader last turn instead of wasting me off the Tundra, but I think he would have wasted me because he had Thalia in play. What did you get off the Ringleader again? A Pile Driver. Pile driver. Which you cast? Or no. No, that was, yeah, that was separate. These are the Pile Driver you had before. Okay. So I know Todd has Pile Driver in hand. Uh, this one first. Yeah, they they both resolve. Go. Cool. Uh, upkeep. Yeah, this can just go in the graveyard and transform. And draw. Ugh, that was not good. Um... So this is currently seven damage. I guess I should just be, I'm pretty sure I should just be protecting my life total here. Cause Todd's a little low on cards with only two. He would have played a ringleader if he had it. So I'll counsel judgment the pile driver mm -hmm. and uh, play a flooded strand and pass the turn. Okay, uh, pay for more Marshall to yep. go. Attack for two. I'm at seven. I'm going to fetch for a mountain to play around uh, back to basics a little bit and then pass the turn. Uh, on your end step, I will predict myself. Sure. Name island. Draw one. That could have gone better. Upkeep. I'm going to target uh, Scanta. Seven. That's fine. Okay. Draw. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I meant to play this too. Oh, sorry. Sure. We're just kind of shortcutting. All right. So I took a fetch line damage. I should be at 17 because yeah, you have not. That's what I have. You have not 17 me to this seven. Game. Yep. Um, okay. I'm going to take the time on this turn to get the Jace down because I have some cards I want to shuffle away. I'll brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> guess get rid of these. Um Yeah, and then play this one and pass the turn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're in the the point of the game where like I'm pretty close to dealing with everything. Just need a little more time. Alright, tag Jace with both. Jace goes to one. I'm pretty happy to see that. Because if Todd's still trying to play a grindy game, I have the resources to play that game. Instead of just trying to kill me. Hmm. Go. Uh, upkeep. Target. No, I can't. Do. I will... Float mana and cast a predict targeting me. Um, you brainstormed last turn. Yep. All right, I'll activate this. That's fine. Trigger. Uh. Yes. Yeah. Predict resolves. Name polluted delta. Okay. Um. 
You may go to your draw step. All right. In my draw step, I assume? Uh, yep. Todd lets me go to my main phase. I can immediately plus two this Jace. He does not really want that. Uh, so I, I guess I should play around Supreme Verdict here as opposed to uh, Terminus. So we'll just sack a token. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Crack this fetch, go to six. Hardcast. Uh, and I'm snapping. Uh, verdict? Yes. Okay. Snapping the verdict. It's going to leave me one token behind from the Mogwar Marshal dying. Yep. Uh, Snapcaster is going to end in the graveyard from the verdict. Verdict will be exiled, and I will pass the turn. How many cards are in the still? Four. Blah. Now that vial on five is pretty bad. This is a ringleader. Yep. Gross. Trigger. Can I get a good one? Oh, yeah. I got two this time. Ugh. All right. Attack for three. I am at three. All right. Your turn. Um, awkward. Although, oh, yeah, I guess this sort of makes it fine. Um, okay. Um, the two were jump home and generator and what? And matron? Uh, matron, yes. Just gonna find you something else good. A sweet game. <laughs> yeah. You're doing a lot to stay in it. We're definitely going to start with this and then play back to basics and you get thing. Oh, that hurts. And pass the turn. Right. Violin a uh, pile driver. Uh, that is fine. Right, these are locked. Yep. Throw. All right. Um. Three life. We've dealt with the sieging, though, so Todd's not basically out of reach other than haste. All right, cycle target mentor. Uh, I will plow the pile driver in response, get another token. All right, I'll put this in play. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, so there's a small chance. So don't do that yet. Because, okay. like, I kind of want to get this as a backup valve just in case that doesn't have, like, it, it doesn't work. Like, if he plays a brainstorm here or another plow, I'm dead. Uh, so I think I just have to get this just in case, but I, I don't want to. So maybe this is, there's just, like, a higher upside play. You can also try to read your opponent's body language in this scenario. Like, Ross started, like, dragging it towards the graveyard or whatever. So I don't know. I'm going to play for the long game because I think I'm going to lose if I just go get tar fire. Okay. I guess you're at three. Maybe I should. No, I'm just going to get tar fire. I might just kill you with tar fire. <laughs> okay. I'm an idiot. Uh, so plow I forgot you were so loud. Brings you to so 18. Low. All right. And then this dies. <clears throat> now, yeah, so I guess you do have Good. some amount of reach. <laughs> so uh, I still get to draw off the gym yes. too. So. All right, so this is gone. Yep. I'm at, you're at 18. 18. I draw. All right, Wasteland is scan too. And I will say go. Probably just going to go for the tar fire kill. Um, to fairy. Okay. 
and ugh. minus target ringleader. <laughs> if, I, if I plus and don't hit a, some sort of interaction, I just die to tar fire. Or, but if I minus, Todd just tar fires the Teferi, and then I'm at, in an awkward spot against this ringleader. Um, like a minus on the goblin token. <laughs> <laughs> um, Todd tar, tar fires, and then we're in this like top deck war. But I just don't have many things to hit to stay alive if I plus. So I actually think I just have to minus. So yeah, minus on the goblin token. Pass the turn. All right. Uh, draw turn. Um. You have a yeah. You didn't find a ringleader. Um, no, you. Uh, this is a random card off of a gym palm. This is yeah. the card you know in my hand. Uh, yeah, you you can go. Ah, he has disenchant. He thought about disenchanting the ether file. Yeah, I just gave it away like an idiot. <laughs> That's okay. I need to think about that on my turn. No, you're. I mean, you're dead. Doesn't matter. All right. Well, I, like I could have filled this on the upkeep. Okay. That's what I was thinking about. So you mm -hmm. couldn't draw a war chief. It's true. I didn't draw a war chief. Uh, I mean, do you? So I mean, if you do it, I keep. That's fine. It's tapped on your turn. I think actually, just killing it on your turn is better, even though you don't get this because you you can still eat or trade with one. But like letting me untap. Here, let's just. Yeah. Because if, if, if the, well, let's weigh the pros and cons. This is actually a hugely important thing. So if he doesn't upkeep, it prevents me from attacking if I don't draw a three. But if I have a three, he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, if you have Matron, I die on the spot. Uh, yeah, which I do have Matron, but let's see. Uh, like, what, do you, you don't actually die and, on the spot. And right? Warchief, I die on the spot. Yeah, yeah. with oh, so you yeah, tar fire yeah. a blocker, and then these come through for three. Um, or like I trade for both, I take one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any three and I just lose on the spot. So I think you should actually kill this on your turn. But if I do it on my turn, then... You just go block, block, eat this, and then this is still around, but you still have this. You're still not dead to the well, tar then, fire. Like I go block, block, and then you tar fire this, and then I'm just at three staring down a ringleader with no cards. Yeah, that doesn't sound that bad. It's better than being dead. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. Let's, let's play out the game that way yeah, because I, I'm dead I, otherwise. You're, you're dead otherwise. I think this is at least well, an, an interesting line to, to think about. Yeah. I mean, you already have me shut down pretty hard on mana. Yeah. So, all right, we'll draw. I'm very surprised that I'm losing this game. <laughs> Same. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, tech you. So he just has to go block, block. Yeah, and I can't, like, I guess I could, like, try to go, like, double block here. You know I have tar fire. You're just yeah, dead. well, like, then I, oh, yeah, then I'm literally dead. Yeah. yeah. I, for, I forgot that I'm, yeah, I'm at exactly three. So I'm literally forced to do that. All right, so I I, I think I just have to kill Teferi and say go. Yep. Pass. Attack. My one. Go. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Um. Ugh. What do I even? Do I just need to snap a plow here? Uh, I guess I would snap Council's Judgment if I did anything. Like the other option is to just try to like brainstorm into something awesome. Because I'm at one and like pretty dead to most things. Yeah, but you can't shuffle. Yeah, I like, can't and, shuffle. And so. brains, you could easily just... I think just dealing with the current battlefield is more important. Agree. Council Judgment, the... Uh, yeah. I don't think... Oh, it, you're at one, so... Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter which one I pick. Just... All right. You can go. All right. Yeah, still dead. I got to go for it there. It's it's a little dangerous, but the way he was playing it, he took the two hit from last turn. He obviously drew this. Um, uh, dealing with the two-two is way better if I draw Mentor. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet games. Yeah. So even though we have uh, 
basically concluded a best of five. We are playing five total just to give you guys a better look at how the matchup plays out pre and post sideboard. Yeah. Okay, we're here for game five, and on the play, I have another one of these sort of slow hands with a ton of card selection, which is weak to Thalia, but on the play, I should be able to use most of them before that happens, so I'll keep. All right, I'll keep as well. My hand is uh, not Thalia heavy. Okay. <laughs> I'll start on Preordain. And yeah, I don't want either of these. We have plenty of card selection already. All right, uh, I'm going to fetch Aether Vial off of uh, Basic Mountain. You're at 19. Yep, your turn. Oh, excuse me, snow-covered mountain. Brainstorm? So, yeah, that's fine. So what happens when you copy-paste Jim Davis's deck list? Okay, those are pretty good. Um, hmm. Kind of want to... Shuffle these away because I like my hand a lot, and this card has been underwhelming. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to try. And I'm going to oh, crack sorry. this, get Tundra, and play Portent. Okay. Come on, Wasteland. Punishment. The one dual land in the deck. All you need is one. So now I'm at 19. 19 all. Top three? Are they good? Wow, that's a face. All right, let's cut, let's cut to Ross's face real <laughs> fast. Uh. No, they're not good. Okay. I kind of like the basic <laughs> planes that I saw, but it was like two, two more lands. I don't need more lands. Yeah, you can continue. Oh, I'm going to wait. Okay. Why didn't you milk this? Upkeep portent. Whoop. That was a good draw. Your turn. Yeah, it's not really what I wanted to see. Uh, I'm gonna go to 18. Capital judgment. That's what I had. Let's get, let's get that vial. Just stall Todd's development. This I time. vote for the same one that you voted for. Okay. You don't want to vote for the other one? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So a uh, newer one ticks up. Yep. Now I'm at 18. Yep. Draw. That's not good. We needed a land there. Your turn. Okay, well, that's really good. Now, this Gideon looks great. Man, Gideon has looked <laughs> really good. Well, I've gotten to play it while like, kind of ahead. Yeah. I've had I mean, it. if I had drawn a lane that turn, I would have been in great shape. I would yeah. have been able to play uh, like a, a war chief, and then, and then you can't play Gideon, or else I just threaten to just smush your Gideon on the spot. Yeah. Now, now I'm in just in some trouble. All right, I guess I gotta do the same thing. You're 18. Just hope for the best. Um, Thalia, I don't think it's gonna do me much good here, and I think I just lose if he plays back to basics if I get a non-mountain, so. All right. Um, yeah, your turn. I think a change. That's kind of interesting, but. Do you get a change? Do you get <laughs> So, uh, if I make this play, which is like the most straightforward play, I get blown up by Thalia. But if Todd had Thalia, he definitely would have just viled it into play on his turn. Uh, so would I though? I don't know. Well, we'll see if you really got me. Snapcaster target console's judgment. There's us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of want to hit the vial Ooh. a little bit, but. Now, I'm going to let you think about this one, because this is actually... What what you do actually changes just the entire dynamic of the game. Because I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start pumping out tutus here, rather than try to get aggressive against the... If I deal with the vial. I guess either, either way, I think. Um, uh, if I leave Warchief in play, like, Todd can ringleader me. Um, but I'm going to be pretty good at blocking just crappy goblins. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I find, like, a sweeper, then I just get to sweep away things, and, and Gideon takes over. Mm -hmm. So I actually... I'm, I'm going to go for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the vial instead, and I want to see how this works. I think this leads to better things down the road. Make another knight and pass. I've got three blockers. Todd doesn't have a fourth land yet. Like, like an idiot.
Now, if Todd has to expend a ton of resources just dealing with this Gideon and trading for all these Night Ally tokens I'm making, then what's left of my hand should be able to take over. Ooh. Do you Good. have two tar fires? Matron's fine. Yeah. No. I guess I'm where I should be wary of Siege Gang Commander. That's a card. That's a card that can get me. Sharpshooter. Okay. <clears throat> There's no prospector in the decks yet or anymore. Cool. But if Todd can find like his tar fire, I guess, to untap it, this might end badly. Or it can end with this. Oh, come on. Touch your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Snapcaster's still in my deck now. <laughs> yeah, make one of those. Play this. I'm actually going to crack this now so Todd doesn't have a chance to respond to my spell after I do this. And uh, you can go. Go. Okay. Uh, on your end step, I'll play. Am I supposed to even play this predict? Having an instant helps sharpshooter against these with the mentor tokens. No. Hey man, I, I, I don't think you do it, but just because it, it could end up being a naked token that just dies. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I'm with you there. Well, that was a great draw. <laughs> so, so with your sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah, you win. I quit. I could play it out. My hand is literally just a bunch of goblin ringleaders. I have an incinerator, but with no goblins on the battlefield and none yep. coming anytime soon, I'm basically just never going to be able to kill this. You're also just taking and, 10 this turn. Like, yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm not dead this turn, but I am almost assuredly dead next yeah. turn. What would you name? Uh, probably Silent still. Probably Sword to Plot Shares. <laughs> <laughs> Since we had a pretty long match, we're going to have a pretty quick outro, but I do want to touch on the uh, the smaller nuances of uh, the matchup as well as the decks now that uh, some more decks are coming to light and legacy as well as the Banning of Death Red Jetaxian Probe kind of changing the landscape a bit. Go. Um, so as far as this matchup went, I wanted to see how Monastery Mentor played out. It disappointed because it was very vulnerable to Gem Palm Incinerator, and the tokens it left behind were not particularly impactful because there are not a lot of instant speed ways to pump them on your turn. Mm -hmm. I'm using I'm trying to save my brainstorms and plows to use them in that capacity is pretty rough because I'm generally using them to generate the tokens in the first place. So Mentor did not look great, but the Gideon in the post and the games I won was awesome. That was the card that really allowed me to take an aggressive posture that was resilient mm -hmm. to jump home incinerator and the two games i won were games where like you stumble a little bit or i had the good answers at, like lining up early i was on the play and landed the turn four gideon on a board where i was probably slightly ahead both times and it ran away with the game yeah i, I think that's exactly what gideon is supposed to do is steal games uh, when your opponent stumbles and decks like miracles don't usually have the capability to do that because they're so slow and grindy uh, but monetary mentor uh, functions very similarly on that vein uh, but is a little more vulnerable to spot removal and uh, various effects like that whereas gideon is insulated from that just being a planeswalker it's just very difficult to interact with and that's something that's fairly common in legacy i mean uh, me and you both played uh, green white maverick back in the day and uh, cards like Elspeth Knight's Errant were very good because people just didn't have ways to interact with Planeswalkers. And even though the effects were minimal, make a 1-1 one, one, or plus 3, plus 3 and flying on a creature, like those aren't great effects. Like they're, yeah. you know, when you get to do either or over time, it becomes very good. Um, oh, but, uh, you know, I thought it was one of the best cards in the deck personally and Gideon is this newer Planeswalker that uh, looked like it was insanely good. And I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what else to say about it. I, I mean, I you're talking about playing Maverick back in the day. I used to play Garrick Relentless on my sideboard. Just make two twos every turn. Yeah. And Gideon does that and, and more. And fight their Stoneforge Mystic. 
<laughs> yeah. So Gideon just does that and more. Mm-hmm. Uh, looked very good there. And it, you saw the games that went long, Goblins won. Every time we went past turn 10, I thought I was ahead in two of the games, and you like squeaked to squeak to buy. That X is so good. At I mean, grinding. I did just find Siege Game Commander both times, and I, you know, that's usually the the how how it goes. And I think it's one reason why these these Goblin decks should probably just play more copies of Siege Game Commander. It's obviously very expensive, but it gives you a reason to take up your vial past three. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you're going to be stuck on one two lands, or you just want to start uh, putting ringleaders on the battlefield with vial while you use Rich and Import, and having a reason to tick up to four means you also have a reason to tick up to five and may- maybe playing two is the right number you know three is starting to push it and four is probably just too much for for yeah, legacy or four, four can't possibly but i mean there has to be a world where legacy becomes no more combo or just you know all mid-rangey decks that are trying to fight each other with card advantage and such and in those worlds cg and commander is the best thing you can be doing yeah cg and commander is definitely great in any matchup like that and it was a being your primary or almost only source of breach, I guess the one Tarfire did a lot of work. Yeah, um, it did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, and getting that reach in the deck because you're pecking for one, two, three a lot in these games, mm-hmm. and you do that five times. I fetch it a few times. You don't need that much reach to, to finish them off. And even uh, I, I was thinking, like, if I had found a plow, Siege King Commander was still going to kill me because uh, you had a, a goblin to play and you vial it in and you have four mana up immediately mm-hmm. and you can just sack that goblin and, and siege gang. So in order to stabilize that one game where I was at three, I would have had to deal with lackey immediately, stay at three and th- find a plow and that would have been my only way t- to deal with siege gang and then deal with every other threat you draw, Yeah, uh, which is just hard to do. All right. Well, uh, just so you all know, we do have a Two more videos this week. We're going to be doing two more best of fives, or all fives, but yeah. we're, we're playing five game sets just to, to show y'all how everything interacts in, in all of these matchups. Uh, we are going to continue playing Legacy since it is Legacy Celebration Week. Yes. Uh, we got some really cool decks on the docket, so make sure you tune in Wednesday and Friday where we'll be bringing you all that Legacy action. That's all I got. Yeah, we're just going to be playing uh, decks that we think uh, are going to be good, played early in the metagame and should be good in that early post Death Right and Cataxian Pro metagame and give you a glimpse into what Legacy is going to be like coming up for uh, SCG Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Which the, be, the team open yeah. uh, this weekend should be a fun time. And then uh, whatever Legacy events come after that. So Legacy is in the... This is the most excited I've been about Legacy in so Oh, years. same. I, I'm, I'm actually just excited that, you know, Cedric Phillips is going to be thrown to Legacy in the team opens now <laughs> instead of just saying, oh, what's happening over there? Oh, Jody uh, Keith's playing Lance. Oh, Tanner Grace is playing Grex Delver. Uh, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going to be so different. It's going to be great. Um, and I'm, I'm just... Yeah, ready to go. All right, let's get it. All right, thanks for watching the Verse Series by SirCGames.com. For Ross Merriam, I'm Todd Anderson, and we'll see you next time.